friends, thank you for joining me. I am starting a brand new series on abiding in Christ and the power of abiding in Christ. I like to do usually five days, although I feel like we could spend five years on this subject because it is so, so foundational and so important. And I highly, highly recommend that if you're feeling weakness, if you're feeling powerless, if you're feeling confusion, that you join me for John 15, because John 15 will help you to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, so we are looking at the power of abiding. I am a word person. I love to write, so we are just going to get into the definition. Abide, abide. Okay, first of all, if you say that word, you have to smile, right? Abide, abide. Okay, it means to dwell, to remain, to be present, to be held and kept. It means to endure or sustain, to continue, to have one's abode, to continue or to reside. Okay, so let's just, I kind of like just went through all those words, but don't you love to be held and to be kept? Let's just think about that. You know what? When you are tempted to think that you're doing this race on your own, no, no, no. Far from it. You are being held and you are being kept by God. So it's a place of relationship. It's a place of sustenance. I love the word to sustain because when God sustains you, it builds steadfastness in your walk with him. Um, you know, I, I'm just, I love looking at trees. You know, if you look at a branch, a branch juts out horizontally, right? So it's, it juts out from the tree itself. It is an extension. In other words, we are living extensions of Christ's life. We can't do anything apart from him. We are powerless apart from him to bear any fruit in our lives. So we can't do anything, which if you think about that, if you start looking to your own self efforts, if you start looking to find your self esteem and to what you can do for him, I'm sorry, you are going to fall flat on your face. But if you look to Christ as the author and finisher of your faith, you will start learning what it means to abide. So let's just jump on in. We're going to read in John 15, 4. We're going to look at just two verses, although throughout the week, we're going to dig in deeper. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch is not able, there it is, not able to bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither are you, so neither are you, unless you abide in me. So there it is. We know that Christ is the fulfillment of the law. And if you try to justify yourself through the law, it's, the word says you've fallen from grace. You know, God knows that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And so that doesn't mean that we live however we want to, it's just saying, hey, you come to the end of yourself right here. And now living faith is what you can do through me. So really, as we look at the branch, we want to look at it as coming to an end of yourself and entering in through living faith. So, you know, I love that word to endure. So a lot of times in your Christian walk, you'll hear those who endure to the end will be saved. You must endure to the end. Well, you can't hear that without knowing that you can't do anything apart from him, right? So don't hear those words as like, yeah, you can do it. No, you can't. You can't do anything apart from him. So praise God. He wants to make his home in you. He wants to dwell in you. He wants you to abide in him. So, okay, I am on verse five. Let's look at one more verse, one more verse, and we'll just wrap it up today. I am the vine, 
You are the branches, the one abiding in me, and I in him. He bears much fruit. For apart from me, you are able to do nothing. So yes, that is a big flesh buster, right? We take no confidence in our flesh. We don't put a good showing on our flesh. We are saying, Lord, we can't do it, but you've done it. Show us the way. Help us to take in your words as bread, as life, as sustenance. Be blessed, and I'm so excited about this series. Have a great day.